Happy GIS Day, everybody! So what is GIS and why should you care? Well, here are three factors of GIS that will help you increase your data literacy and think spatially. Let's go! So factor one, visualization. Now visualization is a huge, huge key to GIS. So GIS takes your columns and rows of data, could be tons of data that you are trying to communicate across to key decision makers, and you just can't because it's a table. Who likes looking at an Excel table? Nobody. So you could make that into a bar graph. You could make that into a pie chart. You could try to color code it or make it look a little fancier than it actually is. But it's still just that unattached informational data. Now with GIS, we would put that information into a map based on location. So a key part of this is all of the information that we work with has a place and has a location that's attached to it. And that is very important for how GIS works and how it connects to people. So when you think about it and you think about visualization, there is an attachment to pictures that we have. Um, if you look at pictures in your own personal photographs or photo, you know, stuff that we're taking with our phone all of the time, you are emotionally attached to those pictures, whether it's a good emotion or a bad emotion, that might be dependable, but it is an emotion that's attached to those pictures. There's also emotions attached to art and landscapes and all of these different visual mediums. And with GIS, you have the ability to create an emotion with your data. And it's emphasized because it's based on location. So you are creating a map that uses locations that people know about. You're emotionally attached to places. And like the town I grew up in, I am constantly looking at the map and looking at the town I grew up in because I'm emotionally attached to it. I like to know what's going on in that town. Also, stuff like vacation places. I like to know what's going on in Florida to be able to see, you know, do I want to take a vacation down there or across to Iceland or New Zealand or wherever you want to go? You kind of tune into those things because you're emotionally attached to them. So we take that emotional connection to place and add our data on top of it, add our story on top of that. And we do that through that visualization of a map. And so it takes your data and gives that extra power of that emotional attachment and just the pure visualization and being able to see the information and take it all in in just a few seconds versus trying to go through rows of information and understand and try to get your own image and all of that sort of thing. So it's a huge huge key to this is create a visualization that is beautiful, something that is communicating what you want to get across, and something that has that emotional attachment to location. So key factor number one, visualization. Key factor number two, collaboration. GIS is a collaborative format, okay? So Esri is trying to push this more and more and is trying to get us to collaborate more. They even have a collaboration between ArcGIS Online and Portal and trying to connect your portal with other people's portals. And it's still a little confusing and I haven't seen anybody that's gotten it to work yet. So if you have, let me know in the comments below. I'd really love to see that. But Collaboration goes beyond just what Esri is trying to market as. Collaboration is any map. Think about it. When have you ever created a map that was only your information? It's very, very rare. Now, when I started working in my career, it was a while ago and it was before, you know, like Esri base maps and it was before there was a lot of information available by the state and there were a couple of maps that I made that were purely my own, you know, back in the days of looking at parcels and rivers and creating my own road layer. And thank God I don't have to do that anymore. But 
those types of things are over. We're always collaborating with somebody. So we are taking in information, whether it's an Esri base map or a local base map that we've created or something that somebody else has created, we're bringing that into our information, slapping our information on top of it and making a bigger whole picture. And that collaboration within the map itself is very important because you can't tell your story without having all of the story, without having the entire picture of all of the information. So you need your information plus the collaboration from everybody else to make your maps work. And that's part of GIS. The other part of GIS is whenever you're in a business setting, whether that's government or education or a retail business or any other kind of business that's out there, you cannot have a GIS department that is GIS centric and still have a spatial thinking data driven decision making company. You can't. GIS needs to be incorporated within the entire company to truly take a value, to truly make everything work well. You have to have people that are collecting information, creating information, maintaining that information, but then you also have to figure out what are you going to do with all of that? Because that's a lot of time and effort to be able to just put something on a map and go, oh yeah, that's cool, it's on a map. Yeah, no, you want something that's going to be collaborative and it's going to go through the entire company. So if you are in a GIS centric position and you're in that process of what I like to call the historian and the librarian, where you are creating data, you're managing data, you're keeping track of the historical record for the company, and then you're providing access to it as a librarian and you're saying, hey, here's all the information, you guys go do stuff with it. If you're stuck in that loop, you need to branch out of the GIS department and truly talk to management. Start getting yourself inserted into some of those meetings. Start thinking about how can I increase the workflow properties of my company to be able to get better information going forward and provide the correct information that we need to make business decisions going forward. Start collaborating with other people that don't know about GIS and they don't think spatially and reach out to them. You are the conduit for the company and you can do that. So make sure that's a path that you keep going because GIS does not work without collaboration moving forward. Okay, so factor number three, data-driven decisions. Now. If you have a beautiful working GIS department that is creating wonderful maps, they're very emotional, they're telling a story, they're putting data out there in a legible, easy, accessible way, and they're working without the company and they're working with people that don't normally work with maps and they're getting information from department to department and breaking down silos and doing all of that sort of thing, then naturally the next step is for your GIS to be doing data-driven decision-making. And that is where you get into the true power of GIS. You are allowed to be able to go through, analyze your information, figure out what is missing in your company. Where is infrastructure not working the way it's supposed to be? Where are your next customers going to be coming out? You wanna be able to make decisions based on data. And we do this every day. Your customers are used to it. So we have things like realtor.com that will allow you to filter your homes down based on how long it's gonna take you to get to work. So I can say, hey, I work in this town and I want to find a house that's within 20 minutes because I don't wanna drive further than 20 minutes. Okay, so I actually do drive further than 20 minutes to my actual job, but maybe I don't want to, maybe I wanna find a better home. Realtor.com has allowed you to create that filter and create that ability to use their GIS to find you a better home. We use it for other things too. So like fires out in California, being able to say, hey, this is where the fire is. These are the people that are going to be impacted. This is where we need to get resources watching the hurricanes that are coming into the country and saying these are where we need to put resources we need to strategically place them here here and here this is infrastructure that's going to get damaged 
That is all data-driven decisions. And then when you get it onto the retail business side where you're driving, what do my customers need? What kind of people are my customers? Do I need to pull demographic data and see, do I have a bunch of millennials? Do I have retirees? What kind of people do I need to target for marketing and for placement of my products? What is gonna make the most sense? Or even where do I put my business? How do I judge traffic flow? All of those things can be determined through a good GIS system. So if you want to be making better data decisions, you need to be looking at your GIS department. And if you don't have a GIS department, maybe it's time to start thinking about one. So if you think these are tools that you could use in your business, make sure that you subscribe and hit the button to ring the bell below and hit a like please i would love to have that and it helps me get my video in front of more people's faces so if you think that other people could use this information please share it out and help me move the message forward thank you for watching and i will see you next week bye